This episode of Heroes of the Horn is brought to you by Mistress Jen of the Women's Circle. Twice and twice shall he be marked, twice to live and twice to die, once the heron to set his path, twice the heron to name him true, once the dragon for remembrance lost, twice the dragon for the price he must pay. Welcome to Heroes of the Horn, a Wheel of Time podcast. I am Sir Matt. And I am Sir Ezra. Welcome to our Wheel of Time book club. The horn has sounded, and we have answered the call. Today we are covering The Dragon Reborn, chapters 1 through 10. As another book. We're in another book, man. It's crazy. Uh, uh, yes. it, feels like, it feels like the Wheel of Time is flying by, but then I, then I remember... There's still over 10 books to go, so maybe <laughs> yeah, not right. so much. Um, I got to say, you know, I think you, you've told me this, that a lot of people, I think maybe back in the day, thought this would be the end, and I can kind of see that, Yeah. right? I mean, yeah. geez, I mean, we're only 10 chapters in, and it feels like, well, we're talking about a lot of end games. Seals are being broken. There's not yeah. many seals left. Where's Rand? He's like gone. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Lands back, and there's a whole lot of Perrin. Yeah, I know. This is kind of a weird. Um, gosh, I, I can only imagine when the, when this was coming out. Like, if you didn't know or you weren't really following like the author's comments, you would think, okay, this is like a trilogy. I mean, this is gonna. This is it. This 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 is this is it. This is gonna be a big epic book, and there's a lot of epic things that happen. A lot of characters grow and develop here in a large way. Uh, but we have much more to go. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Which is Absol- great. So. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, how you been, man? How you doing? Hey, I'm doing well. You know, ah, uh, gosh, I was just sitting over here and I was thinking about the, uh, thinking about the wheel and I was thinking about how it turns, right? I was thinking about the ages that come and go, right? And I'm just like, it doesn't stop, <laughs> right? It's just like. Time keeps going and going and going. Oh, my gosh. And so, you know, don't think about that too long because I got a little depressed there for a second. And then I was just like, it's all good. You got to seize the day, baby. You got to live. And uh, I don't know, man. It was just like I got transported away. This is kind of like the start of this book, by the way, too, is a little bit. uh, I don't know. It's not. It's kind of. Uh, not as happy. It's just really kind of, uh, like things seem in chaos. Like Rand is completely different. Uh, Perrin's got to step up and it just kind of was weird how it's paralleling, I guess the world a little bit right now. So just crazy, but I'm doing okay. Uh, I'm just thinking about that, that, you know, time ticking by and the wheel turning and it's just driving me nuts over here. So, yeah. but are you doing all right? Are you thinking about the same thing? Time? Uh, oh, yeah, you man. You know, just reevaluating myself. I'm probably going to be starting a new job here soon. So that's definitely exciting. So, you know, it's just always even you start reevaluating, you know, where am I at financially? Where am I at? You know, and all the just life goals, all these types of things. And so that's kind of where I'm at too. reevaluating my wheel uh, uh, <laughs> of time, man. You know, yeah. how, how my how my thread is going along as well. Yeah. So. Um, gosh, it's hot here today. Definitely summer mm. out out here today. So um, got some family in town visiting, stuff like that. So that's 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 pretty good. But that's cool. yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's hot, just hot. <laughs> yeah, you know what? And I'll say this: um, it was in the first book, but we should we should definitely pay attention to the weather. You know, something that authors use a lot, and I would tell my students is that when the weather starts to change. Okay, Mm -hmm. something's up, you know, start paying attention, start looking around. And I will say over here in Randland, the weather is all kinds of crazy. I'll just say that it is it is really hot here, too, where I'm at in in Ohio. And I've got uh, the ACs running upstairs like crazy right now. So hopefully that uh, keep me kind of cool down here as I get fired up about these first 10 chapters. But yeah, man, it's it's wild. So that's something uh, remind me or whenever you see that we're going to point out what is happening with the the weather you know it's something robert jordan uses to tell us like 
chaos is either, you know, taken over or something's happening or who has control, who doesn't have control, all that good stuff. So, huh, okay. Um, well, hey, I don't really have, as, as we move into kind of, um, that was our hero's welcome and then on into the village council. Last I really knew, I mean, show news is just that there really isn't a whole lot. We got some casting announcements, which were cool. They're giving us, a, you know, little tidbits here and there. Um, and it seems like maybe there's a comeback in the fall. I, don't, I can't tell whether the cast is actually back um, right. working on those last couple episodes or if they're going to come back in the fall. Uh, I haven't really been able to figure that out yet. It, it seems like there are some reports that they are there working, getting ready for the cast to, to show up again. You know, I think you probably have to set things up again, right. get everything kind of organized. And so they're working towards that. But that's. To you me, the, yeah. To me, the biggest one um, is they have cast uh, a character, uh, right? And we t- I don't know if we did a YouTube video on this or not, but um, they cast a character, uh, Dana, right? And so you th- you're thinking, oh, okay, well, that means we're probably going to be into some great hunt stuff. But now there's speculation on the internet, right? There's some character just named Steve, and everyone's like, who is Steve? Uh-huh. Right? Is he just an original character that they're going to use? You know, he or is he going to blend somebody, or is he? Are they just giving him the names uh, Steve so that he could actually be, you know, somebody else? Right? Like they're masking it. Um, so the character Dana, right? You would think, oh, that's D E N A. That's going to be Tom Marilyn's, you know, girlfriend who dies in, uh-huh. in the Great Hunt. Yeah. Um, but they've spelled it D A N A. And so it doesn't really seem like there's any reason for that. Like there's no real reason for them to have it be spelled that way because it's just going to be in the credits and stuff like that. So now there's speculation that it she may not actually be Dana, D-E-N-A, like it is in the, in, in the book, and perhaps be somebody else. Yeah, I have been wondering a little bit about that character as well because we're still missing some pretty... Uh, large casting announcements like Min or Elaine and others, and so I was like, "Wow, who could that? Who could that be?" You know? Well, um, that's who some some people are speculating she might be Min. Yeah, yeah, and I, w- I was thinking that as well. But uh, but the, the the actress they have playing her, I gotta say, like, and you know, this always happens. You're always like, "Oh, that's just not how I pictured it in my mind. That's how not. That's not how I pictured that in my mind." Um, she just to me, I, I just. It, I, I, I just they I just feel like they'd be going in a way different direction with if they if they had her as men. If they had if if she was men, you think they're going in a different a different direction of a direction with with maybe the character men. I, just, I'm not, yeah. I don't know. We'll see. You got to you got to see yeah. in costume and stuff like that. It's just like that's just not who I would imagine. That's just not my not in my mind. Pitching. Yeah. Yeah, because even some of these other characters, I think when I look at them, I'm like, oh, okay, like I get it. I see it, and I like I get it. Right. Um. Right. Uh, you know what's funny? And, um, yeah. There's there, no. I get you. There's actually. Uh, gosh. Um, oh, I think it's at the Dusty Wheel. Um, Matt Hatch, I believe, does like a good uh, discussion about the like culture, race, skin tone, all of that kind of stuff in the books, and how diverse different regions are. Because I actually would have to go back and really. Like I have a, you know, in my mind, I have an image of what I think men looks like. But when you go back and read, there's like these one or two lines where Robert Jordan will tell you what their skin color looks like and, and, and that kind of stuff. And it's different than what you would think. I mean, in Andor, we think that it should just be a lot of white, uh, you know, people. It's supposed to be kind of like, you know, uh, right. uh, K- King Arthur's um, Camelot or whatever or what. And there's, it is not actually a lot of the the ancient queens there were, did not have that that, uh, you know, white uh, complexion or whatever. So that was interesting to me. It was a really good thing. Maybe I'll put a link to it if you guys can't find that. If you just look up, um, I think it's just cultures in the wheel of time. Type in Matt Hatch, Dusty Wheel. It's a really good discussion. I think he does it with Daniel Green. I could be I could be wrong about that, but it was it was pretty cool um, to kind of think about when we see these. You know, castings. People who have been sort of like, ah, I don't, I, you know, I'm not really sure. I really, ultimately, don't. Care. Even if they, if it was someone who was described a certain way in the book, I really wouldn't be too upset if they changed. You know, that I guess. If does it make right. sense? Would you be upset if they, yeah. if they, yeah, no. if they, yeah. 
Um, well, I didn't. I mean, they have uh, they have um, you know like the 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 people they have playing they have Egwene right in my mind. Just thinking about her, I view Egwene as like a just yeah I don't know and just like from all the pictures and stuff, the fan art over the years and stuff like that. You go back and you look at it. They have Egwene as more of like a white character, and here she's she's not. And I think it's great. This this is a really diverse cast. It's great. Yeah, and, and I guess that's what I'm saying, too, is that the Wheel of Time um, series has a lot of diversity in it, more so than right. I think sometimes people, you know, realize. And there's these really, sometimes they're obvious, sometimes it's subtle as to as to what right. uh, culture or what tieback we're making to modern modern times. Um, but, but yeah, yeah, so I thought that was interesting. Now, l- let me switch gears here just for a second, because I want to give a shout out to uh, one of our listeners, Olivia, who actually has been looking at... Um, the character Steve is that right, Steve? Yeah, everyone's who is he? Who who is he? Okay, okay. So so she had a thought, and she sent us this, uh, just thinking that um, she believes that maybe he's going to be a Shamael or Balzaman, right? Maybe the yeah, uh, possibly should possibly really, one of the. Should we really be saying his name out loud? I don't know. I don't know if we should. <laughs> I, I I I'm yeah exactly exactly. Uh, but she kind of says you know since Rand and company aren't really sure who. Uh, who he is, maybe we as the audience won't either, you know, that we won't know who who that individual is um, and that he's going to remain sort of uh, unnamed right up until we see him in action, right? I mean, yeah. they're not going to show well, here, us, right? Yeah, I, well, I, guess, here, I have I have one here on, on Dana uh, from Adam Adam Whitehead on dragonmount.com. Yeah. He's, we, know, we know him a little bit more from... He does. He does wheel of time stuff. He does. He makes maps. He does a lot of maps. He's a big time blogger. Uh, he does a lot of good stuff in Westeros, Game Game of Thrones. Um, he's saying uh, this is kind of interesting, right? He's, he he has a, he has a, has a really nice blog here. I mean, he's saying you know it, it, he's like it's possible um, that the, that they decided to name her Dana, not D E N A, but with an A, just because there's already so many characters with stronger E names. Um, and you know it could uh, kind of confuse the audience. Um, you know, like we see this, we see this sometimes. You know, in Game of Thrones, right? Uh, they take Asha Greyjoy, who is a character. There's, but before that, you have a character named Osha, right? And so because of that, they decided to change her name from Asha to Yara, as to not confuse the right viewers, right? Um, and so they're yeah, saying that. that's yeah. they're saying that he's saying that's one possibility. He's saying another possibility is it's a code name uh, for men. Um, and then he's saying another uh, possibility um, is he's saying there's also a possibility that Dana is a code name for another role, um, ranging from Mill Skane, who's uh, somebody who I I'm un- unfamiliar un- uh, familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, to the intriguing possibility that she is actually going to be, they're going to do a gender flip here, uh, and instead of Dane, it will be Dana Bornhold. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> saying it's pos- possible, yeah. Oh my goodness! Didn't That's think about that. Interesting. That is very interesting because we're actually going to talk about uh, Dane Bornhold today. Uh, yeah. Whether it's extended well, or it's the, the last chapter, so they did. Yeah. So they did announce. Um, they did announce. Uh, they have an, They did announce another Bornhold, right? Stuart Graham is uh, G, uh, from Bornhold. Yeah. So now that's interesting because, it, and if you look at the girl, oh gosh, what is what is her name? The actress. I'm trying to find her real quick. The actress Who? that's playing uh, Dana. That's playing Dana. Uh, Azuke Hoyle. Okay. 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 I have, I just I just kind of have luck. Fortunately, have the because in, in the in the in the big casting they've done right. You've had the Cawthons, Daisy Conger, Marin Alvier, Bran Alvier, right? It's a lot of people who we're going to see early on. Then uh, the next kind of wave was Geo from Bornhold, Mistress Grinwell, Master Grinwell, and Dana D A N A. Um, so you know, you and I have you and I did uh, you and I've talked about. Well, do you introduce? I think if it is Dana, right, uh, Tom's kind of mm-hmm. girlfriend who dies. Well, I think that it would be important to move some of that stuff earlier, right? Because yeah. that way, when because if we get to the end of the Great Hunt in 
if the end of the great hunt is the final episode of the season, well, then, you know, it comes down. Do you lose Tom in episode two? And then he shows back up in episode like six and then Dane is killed. You know, it's just not as much time. Sure. Yeah. We don't, we don't, we don't, we're not as invested. Right. If we're just not as invested, we barely know this guy. Oh, now his girlfriend dies. Like in the in the books, it's so much. It you know, it's an entire book goes by mm-hmm. that you you don't see him. So then you see him, and it's just different. It's you know, there's so many more other things that happen. That's one of the things with with TV is well, it's just it doesn't hit as hard, and you, know, you lose some of that impact. Because yeah, yeah. It's yeah, you, you it's not the, it's the the not time. it's not chapters yeah. and chapters and chapters apart. It's ten minutes apart or like an hour apart. You know, yes, so, or like, right, right. So yeah, so. So I'm with you that I I because I was kind of leaning towards maybe we would just see Tom's Tom's lover earlier on or an apprentice yeah, or I something think, who yeah exactly yeah. what I yeah I mean if you're gonna if 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 she is gonna be in it see I think they could cut that out I think they could cut Dana completely out me too if they do if, if you're gonna do it if you're you're gonna I think you could cut it out I mean it sucks you know she I I like her I, I just I think it's cool i think it's i think it's i think it's good in the story that tom has yeah, his girl absolutely at tom whatever and then he loses right and so then it shows well Rand comes back in my life and look what happens kind of a thing i think it's good yes um mm-hmm. but what i would do is if you're gonna include her then she is in edmund's field with tom she's like his traveling companion long you know that way if she does if you have her and she dies in like what would be episode six or seven right well okay now it's like as a first as the tv audience who is viewing this for the first time you're like oh man that's his longtime girlfriend and she just died you know what i mean it's just it's different yeah because it's it's like it's like in it's it's like in um you know it's like it's like in game of thrones right you can introduce a character uh you know like you you saw this sometimes uh where hey they're running running around the 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 riverlands right and you run across maybe like a farmer and his daughter and then the next thing you know the farmer and his daughter are dead you just met those characters but you can immediately picture in your mind oh man you know that's like they've you know that's his daughter they had a life together it was peaceful and so it's just an easier picture to absolve but if it's like hey i just met this girl and she dies it just it doesn't hit as hard yeah yeah i i I, yeah no 100 percent. i think there's going to be things like that that are going to be different. I mean, we could literally see that character in the two rivers with Tom and, and that might make us really go, Oh, wow. That's interesting. You know? Right. Um, and again, I've even thought, you know, I've actually rethought back to whether or not they're going to have Tom show up in, in the two rivers. If, if, if maybe they wouldn't pick him up in barrel or something just to kind of spread out how yeah. you introduce. People. I think so he will. Who be, knows I think, do. I think he'll be the, by far the most different of the books in season yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. I love it, man. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yes. Yeah. Steve and Dana, like just uh, interesting kind of people are trying, trying to figure it out, trying to figure out what, uh, what we have going on there. So, Absolutely. Um, yeah, folks, if you've got thoughts on that, send us a, send us a message, you know, we'll kind of, we'll kind of, I mean, we can discuss it in maybe part two uh, a little bit more. Absolutely. So, all right. Well, you're yeah. ready to dive into the chapters as. Yeah, and you know what? I thought I would do the too long didn't read this time. If that's cool. Um, well, I kind of did. I kind of did it earlier already. Yeah, and, and I, I think I'll be even shorter. So, um, Rand sits on the mountain, goes crazy. Perrin uh, notices it all. Rand disappears. They go looking for him. That's it. That's, that's it. Pre- that's pretty much it. Yep, I'm with you. And lands and, back, baby. So yeah, most Im- most let, importantly. So let's go. <laughs> all right. Well, here we go. Um, so then we'll do this, and then we're just gonna we're gonna do some big takeaways because um, maybe th- this ch- this stretch of chapters it, there's isn't as isn't as dense as uh, some of the other ones we've had. So um, chapter one, a member of the traveling people, Leia, arrives at the camp of the dragon reborn. Chapter two, Rand and Moraine argue about the dragon sworn on Almuth Plain, even though he knows she is right. He accidentally causes a minor earth tremor. No big deal. <laughs> um, chapter three, the camp recovers from the small earthquake Rand caused. I threw small in there because I thought it was funny. Mm-hmm. Um, chapter four, Perrin visits Teleron, uh, Teleron Riyadh, um, but is disturbed by a Trolloc attack. Chapter 5, Trollocs attack and are defeated, but Rand is unable to do anything. Chapter 6, the camp wakes to find Rand gone after learning that he may have been dreaming of Kalendor. Moraine realizes he must be heading to Tyr. 
Chapter 7, the group chase after Rand, who manages to stay ahead of them. Chapter 8, the group meet with a man, Gnome, who succumbs to the wolf within. Chapter 9, Perrin enters the wolf dream. Uh, and Chapter 10, the girls approach Tarvalin, where Dane, possibly Dana <laughs> in the show, Bornhold tries to imitate, uh, intimidate them, but they frighten him with the power. So, mm -hmm. yeah, a lot of this is just hanging out at the camp. Um, that's like really like yeah. the first like three three chapters. Lands back. It's pretty Perrin heavy. So um, I have a I have a buddy um, who is Perrin's his guy, and he's like, I mean, I love the third book. And it's like, oh well, I guess I guess I'm seeing now why, man. People, the mm -hmm. Perrin lovers, and this is your time to shine. Yeah, I, I think it's actually kind of neat because, you know, throughout the series, when you ask people what's their favorite book and, and then you ask them what who is their favorite character, well, typically that's you'll find a strong correlation between that's the the time where, um, you know, Robert that Jordan character. pushed that character forward uh, it, yeah, right. to, to a large degree. So, so yeah, a lot happens uh, for, for Perrin in this book. I'll, I can say that. Uh, and we see that clearly here in the first nine chapters. Uh, we are focused on him and his conversation, you know, with... I'll just call. Hey, I'll just call him who he is. The Dragon Reborn. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna quit so saying is Rand. A, so okay? is this? I mean, I with I, I. You know, people. Some people get upset when I ask a question that may be spoiler heavy. But I I'll be careful. Really, I'll be careful. Is I'll, is the is this book? So like you know, like the last book, Moraine's kind of gone. Um, yes. Is and yes. Land Land's kind of gone. Um, and I feel I felt like the last book. Uh, I feel like the first book was pretty evenly split. Um, but the last book I definitely felt like was Perrin was definitely t maybe took a little bit more of a back seat to Matt uh, uh -huh. in terms of those secondary characters. So is this is this book kind of a Perrin heavy book? Uh, yes, yes, it is. And I would say if you look at the okay, if you look at like the book as a whole, right? Yes, because from start to finish, he's a big deal. But what you'll find sometimes in the series is that like. You have a character who's who's a big deal in the first ten chapters, and then disappears for like a good port, like maybe even the rest of the right. book until like the last chapter, um, and and so you, you kind of it's it's not like they're always there, but I mean this is definitely he's he's pushed forward. It's also a point of view too, so we're getting more of his thoughts versus like right. Oftentimes we were following Rand, right? We were in Rand's mind in his head and seeing how and we grow attached to Rand. We we really like him. And when we then move away from him and we don't know what he's dealing with internally and we don't get a whole lot of, uh, you know, that that uh, inner kind of dialogue. Well, now all of a sudden we're relying on what Perrin or or Moraine or Matt, you know, thinks of Ran and his actions. And so then we're sort of like, OK, like if they like if we were in Ran's mind all the time, we would probably understand we can, we can kind of like gather more of what he's going through. And we do get that in the beginning here just a little bit. We definitely do. Um, but now we're going to more get that indirectly through conversations and him in his actions and conversations that other people are having about Rand, right? So like Perrin and Moraine are having like this big conversation about Rand and what he's doing. And that's how we learn what's going on with him. But then, but then through that, so we, we still keep Rand sort of present, but yet now we understand that Perrin is developing, he's kind of pushing back on Moraine, wanting to know more about her plans and all that kind of stuff. That's really a lot of the the tension that's going on. It's to 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 really sum this up in, in a big nutshell, I guess even the first five chapters, you know, after what happened in the Great Hunt, and Rand is now you remember you had the Sh the the Shinarans, right? Ingtar, yes. my, my friend, you had uh Uno, Masima, <sighs> Poor Ingtar, all those man. guys. I know, I know. Just, just, I, I love him. Uh, but, but the Shinarans are still there. You know, they are still there. And after they saw what Rand did in the Great Hunt, they have now sworn themselves to him. They are like with him through and through. He is the Lord Dragon. Okay, he's not like the Dragon Reborn. He is the Lord Dragon. Okay, to them. Yeah. So you're like, holy cow. So he's he's elevated in a way through in, in their eyes and they're kind of sitting here in, in this no man's land, really uh, distant from the uh, Almuth Plain, a little further south uh, and to the east. And they're trying to figure out, I mean, Rand is struggling right with Moraine and like, what does he do? What are his next steps? Where should he go? 
And Moraine has a plan. He's trying to think through it. He doesn't want to be a puppet. He's being told by all by Balzaman that like that's what the I said I want to do. You're gonna be just a a puppet to them. They're gonna use you however they want. So he's trying to avoid that like crazy. And I I, I really think Perrin, and sorry I'm just going on kind of a rant here. That, but, no, go right uh, ahead, man. Yeah, I think I think Perrin uh that's that's one of the things when Rand does leave. Just to kind of jump around here, talk big, big picture. Um, That's fine. Yeah, yeah. Perrin says something to the effect of like, you know, is this your doing, Moraine? Or is this the pattern, right? Or is this, does he know what's best? Or is it that you just drove him to this? You know, what is it? They're always kind of struggling with, um, did their actions cause this? Is it, is it meant to be? Is it not meant to be? It's that, it's that constant struggle. You know, we have this struggle between like light and dark, and we also have this struggle between like fate and free will and choice, which is which is amazing, and that's what Robert Jordan does. So Perrin is confronting Moraine with that in 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 you know a, a big way, and she's not having the whole time too loyal, right? Is sitting there going, uh, "Hey," <laughs> he's trying to tell Perrin like, "I don't know that I would like insult Moraine." I mean, she's kind of a she's a nice she's guy, Perrin. You know, don't don't be disrespectful. I think even the Shinarans are kind of like. Heron, bro, calm down, man. Like you're, that's that's Moraine. But but hey, it's it's like this, all right. If somebody comes after Sir Matt, like I don't care who you are, I don't care who you are, all right. I don't care. I don't. I, I mean, seriously, you you could be Lord whoever, Lord this and that. I mean, I got your back. I'm gonna talk to you like I'm you know on equal footing. Okay, so that's what Perrin's doing there, kind of for Rand, uh, which I think is pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, I like I like that Perrin gets to kind of be like the guy taking charge, right? And I think it's cool because, um, you know, I just like it's one of the nice things about this is that we do get these POVs, and we even get essentially sometimes you get two POVs inside of a chapter, um, and I which I think is also just interesting because it's I don't know of any other really book series I've read where you get different POVs inside of a chapter, mm-hmm. um. And so like it's just break, because yeah. you, mm-hmm. yeah, exactly. Just so you get, uh, you get to see just everyone's different, um, and and because they're so close together, right? You know, like you and I read Game of Thrones, and the world is so far apart that, and I'm sure that that will happen with this, um, because there's just so many characters. But uh, you know, like in Game in Song of Ice and Fire, Game of Thrones. Um, you know, it's rare that you have a lot of these characters that are together. And even if you do, it's always you get like that entire story told through you pretty much through that person's eyes. Right. right. I mean, yes. you think like like you, you Game of Thrones, for example, you know, Daenerys Targaryen, her entire story, all of those characters are told basically just through her eyes. Um, it's, you know, until you get to like book five when you get some other characters over there. So here you have people who it's like no these are the same people these are people in the same camp and you're getting their yeah. perspectives of the same event and i just think i think that's pretty cool yeah and it, and it helps us because basically it's kind of a bridge um we're going to move from Rand's point of view into parent a little bit more here and help the reader kind of get used to parent and seeing Rand through his eyes because the dragon is gone here soon i mean right. he's gonna leave so and we'll need to kind of Plus, really, one of the themes of this, like chapters one through ten, and actually uh, maybe even the first couple books, is a shortcoming of Moraine. And people can disagree with me on this, is that, and she, I think he even acknowledges this later, um, she definitely kind of, she kind of acknowledges it in these first ten chapters, which is why I'm bringing it up, that the other Taviran are important. You know, Matt and Perrin are equally important. And I think sometimes she gets singly focused on this one thing and misses out on what Perrin is experiencing. So instead of like all those conversations she's having with Rand, she if she wanted more insight into Rand, all she had to do was go speak more to Perrin and learn that he was having a dream about Kalendor. You know, like learning that, okay, you're dreaming about this. Other members of the camp are dreaming about Kalendor. This is heavily on on Rand's mind, so possibly he's wanting to to go that route. So sometimes, and she when she realizes that again, she grows and, and expands sort of like her focus and says, "Okay, I need to see more." She's a great reader of the pattern, but it is a vast pattern. It's not it's not something that I think one Aes Sedai can 
can look at and really understand. Like it, it, certain things are sent to you. So, you know, the start of this, and, and not that I'm going to go in chronological order with this at all, but I wanted to go back to um, chapter one for just a second. And that Leia shows up, These, this, uh, a member of the, of the traveling people, uh, the Tuathon, shows up and Min has a reading around her. They yeah. kind of foresee that she's going to, you know. Die. Yeah. Die. Yeah. And a and, pretty brutal uh, death, too. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And what's, what's crazy, right, is that, like, Min for a second thought she had misread it because of the earthquake that Rand causes. And she gets, like, a cut to her head and there's the blood and with the head situation. But no. Uh, she will she will die, you know, later on. Um, but the other thing is that so Moraine has been having visitors. She's been having individuals bringing her like a network, right, of what do you, want, you mean? Call it spies. You call it whatever you want. We see that the Dark One is sending ravens that they're shooting down. They're shooting mm -hmm. those out of the sky. Like those are your spies going back to Murdral, kind of sharing information. Well, Moraine's got her, uh, you know, these women who are coming in and reporting stuff and and. It is kind of a mystery, at least for now, um, as to how they know how to find Moraine and why they're coming to her, you know, and did you wonder about any of that? I mean, they're just these yeah. Perrin in the beginning is just like, who are these people? They keep showing up and they say things to Perrin like, I just how knew did, if I came this way that someone how, yeah, would show me too yeah, much. It's, it is, yeah, it's like, how did, how did they know? How did they know to find Moraine? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it's it is it's it's a mystery but that's sort of her spy network she's countering trying to gather information the same way that we saw um that we saw the white cloaks right in in the fortress of light and just in the prologue trying to gather their intel get your reports moraine's doing that and the dark one is also out there with his servants you know trying to to inquire or you know, trying to get that information because this is a big event right what happened on Almuth plain in, in falma above the sky in the skies this battle took place we saw it in everybody's the, on everybody's on watch everybody everyone's everybody, on watch there like there are notice really, notice has been sent yes yes and so there are posters out i mean rand's description is out there it is people are are wondering let's just let's just say okay it, it's 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 a big deal okay the world is now there have been several dragons and they can channel, right? And it's a little scary, but the Aes Sedai have gone and they've put them down. Now, this world is realizing that there is a man. This guy, this guy might be the real deal. There is a man who can channel the one power and he may be backed by Aes Sedai. Not being, not, not being trying, you know, like, like control not, or they're exactly, going to gentle him. Yeah. So that has got to have people thinking okay this 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 is a big big deal and so you can kind of feel the anxiety or you can feel the tension rising in the room right and and rand is sitting there trying to figure out what to do he is now um proclaimed the dragon banner is out it is flying uh there are there are you know masima and his men are around him and they are sworn to the dragon big deal uh gosh yeah so so actually, let's talk about that for a second. Is this cool? We just kind of jump around here. Yeah, a bit. no, that's fine. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, big, we're doing big takeaways. Yeah, because I, I so Masima is turning into he's turning into this guy who basically worships Rand and mm -hmm. thinks, you know, when Rand leaves, one of the things that he they come to Perrin and they say, "What sin have have we done? What did we do that upset the dragon that he would leave us?" You know. What, what, what did we do something wrong? Did we did we displease the dragon? These are people who, you know, they they see Rand in um, you know Lord Rand, Lord Rand, right? As, as, <laughs> yeah. as they refer to him, yeah, uh, exactly, we're kind of thrown yeah. by that. Uh, but now they are calling him Lord Dragon, and they're coming to Perrin when he leaves to say, "Hey, did we do something wrong?" And he basically says. To Masima, like, is it up to you, Masima, to question, basically, to question our Lord, right? He's kind of, it, he's it, kind of, in a way, he's kind of like Harry Potter, right? But, but I am the chosen one. You but know I, I mean? right, like, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah. And yeah. everyone's referring to him as as the chosen one. Yeah, and when you, and, you know, Rand is struggling with that. Um, we'll get to Rand in a second. I'll, I'm, ta I'm kind of tabling that because he's he's the one who's 
struggling with, with all of this, but um, the Shinarans are kind of, yeah, so that's that's sort of where they're at, and they they, they want to please, they want to do what is, what is right. Moraine, this is a big deal, decides to send them away. They're too large of a host. When she's trying to track Rand, she wants to go small, light, quick. Some of them are still wounded from battle, uh, need healed. Uh, you have Uno there. Remember, Uno is the one with the with the patch over his eye who yes. can't help but to swear in front of everyone. And is uh, although he has stopped swearing in front of Rand, that is someone. But and I think that's really interesting. so. He tries really hard to not to swear in front of Moraine, but let me tell you who he does not swear in front of: the Lord Dragon. And it yeah. is like it, it is it, to me. It's sort of a, it's that ultimate sign of respect. That he's saying, like he's trying to be respectful with Moraine, but he forgets himself sometimes. He 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 almost swears, right? But then, it, but then he covers it. But with Rand, this is a man who spoke loudly and was always kind of um, opinionated and things like that, and, and, and would swear. Around Rand, no way. He's completely changed. He's different, and he he will act. And he literally acts like he is the commander of the entire every, like everything. Like, you've got it, whatever you say is gold, and I'm going to do it. Um, so that's sort of who they are and like what, what's happening with them. Moraine sends them away, I think, to Giladon, and we're gonna, we'll are gonna have to pick up with them with them later. But what did you think, I guess, about Rand in the beginning of this? Let's, let's focus on him now a little bit. Like, <sighs> Wow, man, struggles. you know, he is, he is troubled. I mean, it, just, it, it's kind of interesting to me how it parallels uh, just in a different way, right? Uh, think about it's kind of interesting look at the first 10 chapters of each book right so the first 10 chapters of the eye of the world Rand sees this figure he's out there in the woods what's going on Trollocs attack he's gotta leave his dad's having this fever dream saying all kinds of stuff he's never heard before okay then um, you know hey, hey, then adventure starts here we go mm-hmm yeah. First ten chapters of the second of the second book, The Great Hunt, Rand is, you know, why is it Moraine talking to me? I never wanted this. What's going on? Okay, but then hey, uh horn stolen. Okay, we gotta go. Right? Mm-hmm. So it's like it's like you now you're in this moment, right, after the big aftermath, right? He uses the power at the end of the first book, uses the power at the end of the second book, and it, things just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And so now he's kind of in the same thing where he accepted the now. It feels like he's more on his own, even though there's more people around him uh, maybe than there were before. And he's just, he's just trying to okay. It's I feel like he's he's more in this moment now of like, well, it's I have to figure this out myself kind of a thing because all these people are all these people are supporting me all these people are telling me i'm the dragon reborn you know he's got dra he's got balsamon he's he's you know clashed against you know everything just the world is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it feels like to me it's like well edmund's field net you know boom 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 it's just getting bigger can, can i tell you something this and that's where he's at of... it's it's like the weight is just more and more and more yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, Robert Jordan doesn't make any one parallel to any any modern like religion or faith. There, like, there's a lot of those, um, you know, our religious texts or things. Like, there's inspiration and stuff drawn from there, and, and it's 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 kind of a it's a mixture. It's a great sort of melting pot, right? Uh, but I did think it was interesting that in this batch of chapters, Rand is a man who has gone up on the mountainside. And yeah. he, yeah, you know, I'm not saying he was, he wasn't, uh, you know, searching for a burning bush or anything, but uh, he is someone that has been sent into this world to deliver these people, um, and he is going to have to face, you know, the dark one. That's, that's what the dragon is prophesied to do. Okay, so he's he's got a big weight on his shoulders, and wouldn't it be awful if he were misled by someone, if he yes. were given wrong information? Um, and so the burden is there and you've just got like, you, you think about like that devil or that angel on your shoulder, kind of telling you one thing and the other, but sometimes the devil sounds like the angel, you know what I mean? So, so what are you supposed to do? And, and you've got to seek, he's got to find some, some peace. He's got to find some understanding and he's got to figure out what to do. So he wants to hear about the prophecies. He wants to be told what they are and he ponders them and he thinks about them. 
And he's also hearing, we knew this, right? In the last two books, he's been hearing a different voice in his head, right? He's been called Luce Theron. All right, so there's that. So he's, he's seeking some well, type of guidance. He's, not only has he been called that in his head, yes. he's been called that by the heroes yes. of the horn. Let's go, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Absolutely. And, and, and so you're like, all right, what is a guy like that dealing with? So he's up there thinking about these things. During the Trolloc attack, we'll mention this really quickly, um, when he goes down, so they're at this camp, and it is this period of where they're waiting, trying to figure out what to do. He's debating with Moraine every night. What's the next move? He wants to go back to the dragon sworn people who swore themselves to him. There's still turmoil going on on Almuth Plain. There's uh, people who, who, who want to follow him who can't find him. Should he go back to them, Sir Matt? Should he gather his people and, and march, right? Should he do something that grand? That would draw a lot of attention to him. And ironically, he draws a lot of attention to him himself anyways because he creates sort of this earthquake. He channels, doesn't quite know know how to use it or control it, as Moraine says. Right. He's like a child who's trying to run before uh, they know how to walk. And yet, he, he for any fade uh, within 10 miles or more, I don't know how many miles it was, but at this huge radius, that was a beacon. Here I am. Here I am. Am. And sometimes it's kind of like it, it's, yeah. it's, it kind of reminds me. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I'll, I'll just say it real quick. It kind of yeah. reminds me of um, you, you know how sometimes we, uh, ancient alien theorists say, right? Yeah. That like, oh, oh, well, now that we've entered the nuclear age, right? It's signaled to these aliens, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, hey, yes. this planet is now ready for. That's yeah. like I don't know why, but that's just what I think about when it's like, oh, he's signaled, right? He's let, yes. know, he's let everybody know. Yeah, it's something that's drawing their attention. Yeah, so so to me too, um, it was almost as if like it needed to happen. He could he I, he could have wrestled with Moraine for such a long time, but eventually he decided, I need to move, and I need mm -hmm. to do something. So he leaves a letter, right? He leaves a letter for everyone, uh, goes to see Loyal, and basically in that letter kind of says that, uh, you know, like it's he doesn't want anyone else to be hurt. He knows what he has to do, and he needs to do it, right? He feels like this may be it, like there is one more uh, uh, battle to be had, and he's going to have it, and that'll be that. He needs to do the one thing that's going to get him uh, to, to be the Dragon Reborn. So um, Perrin and, and the rest of the camp kind of realizes after he leaves that, wow, he's had this dream about Kalandor. And Kalandor, by the way, is this sword. If you, if you look at the front of your, your, um, your book, The Dragon Reborn, uh, you can see it's this bright uh, kind of shining sword that he is reaching for. And if he's able to obtain it, the the stone of tear will fall it's one of the things that was prophesied that when it falls right and and when he claims this sword that that can't be touched um he will that will that will name him uh the dragon he that's that's a, that's a big indicator that he is uh fulfilling the prophecies and it's a song real it's very powerful it's something that is you know really moraine kind of describes it to to everyone describes the you know, tear, and she says to Perrin, like, you're not just having some random dream. You literally describe the inside of this hall perfectly. Yeah. And everyone's Which like, whoa, yeah. you know. Hey, what's you know the that? fun, can I, can I say something really quick? Especially, yeah. it's, it's especially because of the audiobooks. It's like mm -hmm. any time, it feels like any time that somebody starts talking about how these kids are all like important, you immediately just hear one guy say one word, and it's always the same word. It's like, Hey, what's going on with these guys, man? It seems like they're just pulling all these threads everywhere, and then immediately here comes Loyal <gasps> to Viren. You yeah, know what I mean? it's yes, like every yes. time it's like it's just like yes, a you know, reminder. Just come, it's like Loyal just comes out of nowhere, and it's it's the guy. It, it, it's also just the voice, right? It's like it's it's that it's the audio book guy's like voice, where it's just like oh man, yeah. it just says it the same way every time, and it's always just always just Loyal coming in, and it's tr it is true. Yeah, one word says it all, man. These says kids it are all. Tavirin, and that's just how it is. No kidding. I mean, it, it it truly is one of those things. Like, um, Min even talks about the fact that like a Tavirin would, uh, you, you know, pull. Like she she kind of is is upset, right? That she's being pulled this way or that way by all of these, um, 
Tavira that Rand can kind of just kind of bounce them around and then she's talking about Perrin and what she sees with Perrin and by the way shout out to our Tavirans by the way uh, uh, yeah. Lady Heather uh, Lady Stephanie and and Sir Nicholas who I'm yeah. I'm you know uh, afraid of uh, and, and he may be a false Tavirin okay I'll just he call may, him what he, he is may, he, yeah he may be a dark <laughs> he may be a dark friend but shout out to them those are our Tavirin on, on, over on over on Patreon so um, yeah they're very important literally a, a as loyal described it a web of destiny a destiny web okay yeah right <laughs> was weaving and it was weaving around them and they were at the center right and, and it's, a, it's a big deal uh men by the way we learn more about men's powers right i mean that was kind of cool when she looks at leia right. and she's talking about right. Perrin. We're, we're learning a lot about what she's seeing there um let me see if i can find this really quick because that is I definitely want to talk about chapter four in just a second. That is uh, Perrin's dream in, in Teleron Riyadh, like what he sees there. But Min, if I can find it real quick, I'll look for it here, is talking to Perrin about what she sees around him. Mm-hmm. And and it's 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 pretty cool to think about. Like, she's kind of, um, well, it's, it's prophecy, really. I mean, she's... she's right. He, he at first three. didn't want to is know that, about that. Is that chapter the, three or is that chapter two? Uh, if you find it, let me know. I, I, I can't remember exactly where it's. Oh, no. So it's. Uh, it looks like it's chapter six, maybe. So. Um, oh, it's after. It's after. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, it looks like that's where it's at. So she's she's kind of talking to him about. Uh, let's see. Well, here's what she sees. I at least have this pulled up because I was looking for yeah. her kind of her viewings. So she sees an, um, an Aeolman in a cage, uh, a Tuatha on with a sword, a falcon and a hawk perched on his shoulders. Uh, both female, I think, is what she says. Uh, and all the rest, of course, um, what is always there, darkness swirling round you, right? Uh, and that he should run from a beautiful woman. So when he sees yes. a beautiful woman, he should run. So that was interesting. You had like men's viewings there, which were which were really important. Um, you also then had uh, sort of some of the prophecies of the dragon, which which were listed. Moraine was talking about because they're they're thinking about Rand's dream. Loyal is helping kind of interpret it. They're trying to decide where does he go because Moraine is really worried that Rand has got gotten ahead of them. He is in touch with a power and a knowledge that she that no one has any understanding of, and there are things that he can do. She actually says that she was worried when they finally find like uh his trail a little bit they just know they can they can follow his trail but he's really covering it well and he's way far ahead of them um she's happy that they found a trail why because she was worried that he had learned something from the age of legends and that perhaps he could travel and i was i forgot that she mentions that that little tiny uh uh bit there in in this chapter uh, i think it's chapter six where she talks about perhaps he could learn these things but he has no teacher right so so if he it, she calls it stumbling like he would almost have right. to stumble into it um and i kind of like kind of kind of like what nynaeve does in a way nynaeve and, and well like yeah, wayne's like, a little more top but yeah being a wilder yeah kind of like like what right. nynaeve is right you know learning le- learning on your own um yeah exactly exactly so it's funny that you know moraine i think i think like yeah i always hold back and and try to not not do anything that's spoiler but i'll take you guys back to the eye of the world right rand she doesn't know this rand doesn't even know that he did it but we now have just heard that during the age of legends you had the ability to travel that perhaps you could travel and she was worried that he had right. now now what does that look like and what does that mean and all that kind of stuff that's again i that's something we'll get into later or whatever but just for saying that and if you think back to the eye of the world Rand want at one point, Sir Matt, he was here, and the next point he was clear over here. Am yeah. I wrong or right about that? that is exactly no, you're he was 100% in one right. part yeah. of of yeah, and then so he he shows up at Tarwin's Gap, right? He's over in at the eye of the world, and then he appears at Tarwin's Gap, and then it seem, seemingly he is climbing stairs to you know a, another uh, realm or world, and he's fighting Balsman, right? Which is which is nuts. So he definitely did something there. And, and at that point in time, Rand, in the eye of the world, he had retreated to the back of his mind and someone else was in the driver's seat. Someone else had taken control. Now we know through the Heroes of the Horn and, and understanding that he is the Dragon Reborn, that that perhaps, 
you know, uh, that he is in, co in connection or somehow connected or gaining access to knowledge from the age of legends. So that leads me to this point, too. Moraine brings up, let's see if I can find them listed here. She brings up to Perrin, you know, he's sort of like, well, maybe the, the pattern just forced him, you know, this is something he has to do. Moraine, have you thought about that? Like, you know, um, try to defend Rand, you know, saying like, well, if he just ran away, it's probably because you were pushing him in the wrong or you were pushing him too much or trying to control him too much. So then he he just went this way. Moraine's counter to that is Perrin, the Forsaken, the yeah. Forsaken. And he says, no, but they're bound and, sh and she cuts him off. No, they're They're not. not. They're not. She We've has already met them. some of them. And you said it before. It the seals are broken. Some of them are broken, my friend. Right? You know, mm -hmm. the seals on the dark winds are on the dark ones prison are broken. And so if that's the case, slowly the forsaken will start to emerge. Well, and she's telling Perrin, look out, buddy. Hey, well, you know who else tells Perrin to, to look out for Forsaken? I mean, I'm gonna I'm I'm gonna speculate here. This is one of these moments where Ez knows more than I do, but I think it's pretty freaking safe to assume that the beautiful woman we're talking about is the woman that we've already met. That is the, like the most beautiful woman anyone has ever seen. Uh -huh. Who we see at the beginning of the last book. Her name is Celine. Mm -hmm. But we think it's pretty obvious that it's that woman we see at the end of the Great Hunt, <laughs> Land. Oh, oh, okay. oh, oh boy, yeah, you take it, take it, take a stab there. Okay, I I like that. I like that going out there on a limb. I like it. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, that's so we do right. Men does whether they're one and the same or not doesn't matter. Men did uh, encounter someone named Landfear, and she has warned. Yes, she did. Karen, right? Why? Why would? You know, when Landfear kind of says, you, you take he's care mine. of him. For, yeah, he's mine, says. but but if you're going to be a placeholder for now, fine. Like, not worried about right. it, you know? Uh, so so that was wild. But yeah, uh, Moraine actually goes on to name several of the Forsaken and talk about that they that they could be out and about. And and let's go back now. And to, she did not say one of them was a man called Bors, okay? I mean, is he still out there? I'm right. Just, where is Bors? I know. You've been wondering about okay. that for a long time. I know. <laughs> Since the beginning of the second book. Who is the man called Bors? Wow. Uh, yeah. yeah, we'll find out. You'll, you'll, we'll just have to hang in there. Yeah. 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 It's, it's funny that, that, that something like that is planted. Actually, shout out to our friend Nicole Whitaker, uh, Nicole Sadai, who just sent yeah. me a message not too long ago. Uh, as she's sprinting ahead, reading ahead, and said, oh my God, I cannot wait until Sir Matt finds out who the man called Boris is. And I was like, all, all right. right, I know, I know, I know. Right. It was, it was pretty ready. cool. And so it's just like one of those things, you know, Robert Jordan is so is such a good writer and plants a seed. It will grow, baby. You just got it. Like it's something, it's, He's 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 as good as as George R. R. Martin. He's he's up. He's he's one of the best, man. It's just like mm -hmm. there's subtlety. There's little tiny things that if you pay close close attention to, you you will see. But there's just so much that it's like it's almost like he overwhelms you. Like right, I'm gonna give you so much, and I'm gonna repeat a lot of things, but there'll be slight little differences. And if you catch the difference, you might catch on there. Um, so, anyways, now I wanted to go back real quickly just to shadows sleeping. This is chapter four. Um, I was ahead in chapter six there where Moraine is kind of talking about the Forsaken and things, right? Um, and yes. she's talking about the, you know, just for him to be um, on guard. She even says to Perrin, like, Perrin's pressing her, like, why didn't you have a dream? Why don't you have these these dreams? And she talks about how hers are warded and, and lands are kind of protected as well. So she doesn't have... And, and, and yeah. I want to talk about him too once once we're oh yes we yes kind of get off parent yeah i mean mostly it's just he's back and he's a boss he and nynaeve still need to get a room okay i know man when when men when men wants to leave she says is there any, she, hey just, do you want me to say anything uh i'll say it to her myself yeah okay? yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes i know just a little bit. There's just like that. I'd say it's things are building. You know what's gonna happen. Um, we we I love I love it. I love those two characters and I love their arc and I love their relationship. It's uh you know to this point yeah. it's been 
There's so much. To I think you, Lan. You know. I think Lan is is Sir Nick's favorite character. I, I, it's either Lan really? or Tom. I can't remember. Yeah. Hey, both of those, both of those, um, really good choices. I know our buddy, um, Sir 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 Thomas. Uh, I believe Lan is his favorite character as well. Absolutely loves yeah. Lan. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, okay. So in this in this uh, you know Perrin's dreams here. He is disturbed by a Trolloc attack, but he is in this dream where he finds himself in this um, common room, and uh, he sees a man sitting at a table. Uh, Perrin doesn't understand at first, but the man um, is is referencing his axe, right? So a man sitting at a table yes. asks Perrin if he is ready to give it up, and he references, he points to the axe, right? And, uh, and Perrin says, not yet, not yet. Uh, so there's something dark about the about the man Perrin doesn't really trust. Um, he talks about getting away from fate. Uh, he offers Perrin a drink that will help him see things more clearly. Now, uh, red flags going off here, right? Hey, I mean, man, all I know is that the only drinks I've ever had caused me to not see clearly. <laughs> right, okay? yeah, I yeah, mean, right. typically when I'm when I'm having drinks, I'm seeing two of everything. So uh huh, uh huh. Yep, yep. Yeah, so so he refuses. Um, he, he leaves there, and um, as he leaves, the man tells him that he won't get many chances. Okay, not going to get many chances. So this guy's kind of, uh, you know, what's what's he saying here? But you know, um, so so there's that. Uh, Perrin then feels a a great heat from the room. Briefly, he turns around, but the room is empty. Right, staring into a mirror, he sees himself as a warrior now in fine armor, but with the plain axe at his side. Part of him accepts this image, and another refuses it. Now, it, it's that's some of the stuff we've already been seeing with Perrin, right? Is that he is battling right. with this, like the wolves who are speaking to him, saying he wants nothing to do with it, but yet he can't get away from it. Well, right. also, I mean, also, I mean, just a couple chapters ago, he was he's dealing with the, the, the tankers. They met them the way of the leaf. You know, he he is it a good idea? Is it not a good idea? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. So um, and he's got men seeing things around him. And then now um, he encounters a, a, a woman. So as he's staring in the mirror, then he hears this woman's voice tell him that he is destined for glory, destined for glory. Uh, he turns around, yeah. and he sees this woman, and she is the most beautiful woman, right? Most beautiful yeah. woman that he's ever seen. Um, you know, everything that he does looks clumsy in comparison. She has this grace, yeah. right? Where she have we heard out. that before? Yeah, starting to make, you know, it uh, takes you back to Huron, <laughs> right? Just stumbling over his words. They can't take their eyes right. off of her. Um, just stunning and, and everything. So, um, but yeah, the woman then, you know, talks to him about how he should reach out and grasp his destiny. Uh, Perrin tells her he just wants to be a blacksmith, though. That's it. Just wants to be a blacksmith. She, too, offers him a drink, but again, he refuses. Now, I'll take you back to the first book. Oftentimes, these characters, when they're in, uh, well, we'll just say it, Matt, Perrin, and Rand, when they're in dreams, are offered things. Yes. And they refuse them, thankfully. That's, that's all I'll you say. You should. Like, like, there's a reason and they refuse them, yeah. <sighs> Yeah, and let me just say, total sidebar, just just make just making a just making a total a total joke here. But I uh -huh. just want to say really quickly for all the guy listeners out here, if you are ever in a bar or a tavern or an inn and the most beautiful woman you've ever seen in your life <laughs> offers you you a drink, okay? Yeah. It's, don't do it because the next thing you know, you're going to be waking up in a bathtub full of ice and you're missing a kidney. Okay. So you're so, saying it's a trap. Good job on parent there. Yes. <laughs> oh, man. Well, hey, I mean, here's the thing. At least he gets this offer and that she, she says she'll, she'll right. she promises that she'll always be in his dreams. No kidding. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I mean, you got to think Robert Jordan's having fun with this, right? Oh, absolutely. Is it this most beautiful woman is always going to be in your dreams, the woman of your dreams, that type of thing. He's right. Uh, he cracks me up. So, um, okay. So now the scene changes though. And Perrin is dressed in plainer clothes. This time he finds himself on a stone bridge connecting two stone spires in the distance. He sees a woman in a white dress hurrying somewhere a bit later. He witnesses a meeting of three men. One of them tickles his memory, but he can't quite remember where he saw him before somewhere in an inn maybe uh the three start arguing and suddenly a huge ball of fire envelops them perrin ducks for cover and feels the heat of the blast when he looks back up the whole bridge the men had been standing on 
uh, has disappeared. So he tells himself that it's only a dream. And again, the scene changes. He finds himself in an open space surrounded by uh, huge columns of red stone. In the open space, he sees a crystal sword. Perrin knows it is somehow important. Uh, he doesn't know where... Oh, Calendor. He knows the name. It comes to him, right? He doesn't know where that name came from, um, but he knows that that's what the sword is called. He remembers now he's had this dream before. At that moment, the wolves are able to kind of get a hold of him, and they say that the Twisted Ones are coming, that being the Trollocs. So, you know, parent... It, I remember when I was first reading this, sometimes when you go into these dreams, it is like we have to learn about this, this, um, what's going on there. We're learning stuff from like Balsamon, Egwene is in there a lot uh, up to this point. Perrin is trying to figure out, you know, what's what's happening uh, there. He's 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 there. Matt's having dreams. It's uh, it's it's a lot for our characters, I think, to, you know figure out it's a complex type of world if you will but it does give you a lot of clues as to what's happening so i'll just say that um and and so parent parent encounters all of those individuals and a beautiful woman who will always be in his dreams so there we go all right um okay let's bounce on ahead here so oh yeah i mean really so chapter seven and chapter uh chapter seven we can basically just skip i mean it's it's the way of the mountains and and honestly right. they just well there was there was a trollic attack in there i guess we should say but it was yeah yeah, pretty, yeah, yeah. it was pretty short-lived right yeah yeah there was a trollic attack right uh leia dies um and and this is where that that's where i was talking in the beginning kind of like the split happens after rand can do nothing for some reason he's unable to channel he can't do anything to save anybody but yet he drew all the attention there so you kind of see what Rand is struggling with, right? So he did channel earlier, drew attention to them, and now when he goes to fight, he can't use the power. It's exactly what Moraine says, in that Rand thinks he has control over something, but he doesn't, and he could be more danger to himself than he realizes. So, so that's why he takes off. Um, and when they go looking for him, they split up, and so we're left with what? Lan, Moraine, Perrin, uh, Loyal... Um. Yeah, and the, that kind of crew, you know, right. they they chase after Rand, and um, he's well. So, so it's just them kind of traveling to this um, this town called Jara, right, which yeah. is near the Amadisian border. Uh, so they're heading in that direction. When they get to Jara, which is chapter eight, eight. that's that's a big deal. So that's where they come across Gnome, who had succumbed to the Wolf Within, right. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. said this was, was Perrin-centered. I mean... It is. It is. And we're learning more about Perrin's wolf powers, which is good because um, it's been... You know, it, it, it's like, okay, in the first book, you've got Rand's dealing with his stuff. Perrin has got this wolf stuff going on, but they don't really explain it. It's just kind of, okay. And it felt like, you know, we got more out of it with the Tinkers, and then they pretty much just don't really talk about it that much at all in the great hunt because mm-hmm. we're dealing more with Matt and his kind of, you know, stuff with the dagger. Um, and so then really parents like, well, I can sniff stuff out. Don't really know how, but now we're learning kind of why a little more of this power of the wolf. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, what you can do with it. Um, exactly. Exactly. So they, as they, as they come into this town, Jara, uh, they're realizing that Rand's presence has like an after effect, you know, like people realize he's something special and special events seem to kind of follow him too. So, so that was interesting. Um, Moraine takes them in, right? They find this, this inn, and they find a man named Simeon, um, who tells them that they had uh, a bunch of weddings the previous day, tons of weddings, uh, enough for a lifetime. So that's odd, right? That you would just have all these weddings out of the blue, right? Did everyone decide to just get married all at once? Why? Why? Why is that? All uh, right. Yeah. Um, so Perrin asked, you know, Simeon uh, if he had seen Rand, but Moraine cuts him off, right? And and uh, and asked to be taken to the innkeeper, uh, where they get their rooms. They get kind of set up there. He indicates that there has been some issue with white cloaks. Obviously, the white cloaks are always kind of. You know, imagine that like there's like big host of white cloaks, but then there's these little bands that kind of go out and they're traveling town to town, city to city. They're not going to get messed with, you know, 
if you're a town that messes with the white cloaks, the the host is coming down on you, right? They're bringing everybody. If one of them gets back to report that this town caused them trouble, well, you're all dark friends, and they're coming after you. So, um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. Oh yeah, yeah. Simeon tells uh, about how a group of white cloaks behaved very oddly not a day ago. The chain of command broke down, and some actually ran off, while others demanded uh, to burn the town. So very, very, very weird. Like they had picked up. Is it on, weird? Well, well, I guess. Or is it? Or is it just? Yeah, is it just people realizing what the white cloaks are actually all about? Well, there's that. I mean, so the fact though that inside the white cloak faction that you had people who abandon it, I think is is interesting because that's death, man. I mean, you you know, basically you're saying, what you serve the dark? I mean, you're not you're not a child of the light anymore. I mean. So right. that was odd, and Moraine notes that that's an odd thing to have happen. And I, like, white cloak logic is that, okay, if we were just in this town where a bunch of marriages has happened, uh, some, some strange events are taking place, and some of our brothers ran off, it, there has to be the Dark One's presence here. Let's burn this town down. That's how extreme they think, and it's just, it's, it's nuts. Um, it's, it's crazy. So, yeah, uh, she notices that, that that is strange. And again... Uh, we're, we're, we're following Rand and we're kind of seeing this, um, the after effects of, of possibly his, his, his presence or something happening. So, you know, she's not pleased about Perrin asking yeah. about Rand. She has seen the signs of a Taviran passing through, passing the, through town. the town. Yeah. 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 And then Land suggests killing Simon. <laughs> yeah. 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 Um, that's, that's true. Right. Um, so, because Lan, yeah, Lan's you don't mess with Lan. I mean, if, if he, it's so, he, <laughs> which is which, is, there's an element of that in 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 the first book where basically like cross cross Moraine and you're dead. You know, do something that I think is going to be counter to uh, the progression of the light and you're gone. I mean, he is a a man who fights the shadow. So if something is going to interfere with their mission or whatever, he's Lan is locked in, dude. He is he is good to go. So, but Gnome is this individual. Um, Simeon, right, is is got Gnome locked up. I mean, we're talking about why. I mean, just like he's there, there of. I mean, he cares about Gnome, right? Um, but he's yeah. he's a man who literally is call him a werewolf if you want. He's 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 more wolf he's than wolf. he is. He is man. a wolf. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's like he's yeah he's like he's like parent, right? He's got he's got this wolf power thing that we're still just kind of learning about and and going on, which is, again is great because now we're we're learning more about Perrin and his his kind of abilities here yes yeah yeah so because they have the same eyes right they get the same glowing eyes um right the yet. yellow the yellow eyes because remember if you think back right um moraine when she found out that parent back in the eye of the world right remember they all meet back up and she finds out that parents eyes are yellow it's kind of like uh she doesn't really say anything about it but she definitely is like okay well i <laughs> kind of know what's going on here yeah, uh, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. Um let's see. I guess so uh, we get a little bit more in the next chapter of of Perrin's, you know, powers uh and and wolf dreams. He right. finally decides to kind of talk with with Moraine. We we were talking about Perrin resisting his abilities and struggling with with this side yeah. of himself. But now, she I mean, you know, you're confronted with this. You see Gnome right. and you're like, I don't want to turn into she that. and she and she's and she kind of she kind of says i mean which is why i think if you think back to the eye of the world when she says when she sees what it is um at that point you know she's being she's pretty much can tell us everything about everything she's kind of like the eye said i really don't know a lot about it yeah I mean, they know about it but they don't yeah. they don't know exactly what it is kind of like with men right it's it's think it's kind of similar where they like they're so intrigued by men because she has this ability that they don't know they don't they don't know what it is Exactly, they, they kind of do, but they don't. Way. But they, it's it, they can't really fully explain it. I think they even make a reference that it's something that predates the Age of Legends. You know, because right. the Age of Legends, there's tons of mysteries in that that they don't understand um, and and can't quite grasp. But this, what Huron could do, what Min right. is doing, and what Perrin is doing, these are things that are older than the Age of Legends. And yeah. I think like, whoa, oh, dude, like that's yeah, yeah, she, power. yeah. And so she, yeah, she ends up, she ends up telling him that, um, you know, in like the world of dreams, right? 
uh, where the the at the I said I go in that they will sometimes find wolves that will act as guides to mm-hmm. them. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And and, and Perrin is is um he he's catching that right. He's seeing uh well he, right, he goes back to his room to sleep and as soon as he falls asleep he he finds himself in a wolf dream where he sees Hopper, right? He right. sees Hopper who who he who was killed right and that's the reason he killed the white cloaks that he did back in the first book when he's with Elias and um Hopper warns him that he's in he's in danger serious danger and tells him that to to run um and that he that he should leave so um Perrin doesn't right though he 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 does he does move uh with some urgency though uh he meets a man in his dream who tells him to be gone the man dies a horrible bloody death and Perrin runs on the next person he sees is a beautiful woman dressed with white with raven black hair the woman is surprised yeah. to see him and and uh and wants him to be uh him gone too before he can ruin things quote he could not begin to imagine Perrin runs yeah. again right yeah and so well the crazy thing right is um he runs again uh hopper tells him you know he should leave the dream um you yeah, know then basically parent wakes up and he's covered in blood right mm-hmm. so i mean we're learning yeah i mean so this this, this ability parent has and this ties to the wolves um you know is and the other thing the other thing is is you think about all these characters having all of these stuff about dreams man it's like another realm in there it's an it's not just a dream it's it's something something different right i mean rand's dreams i think is, is has been easy at this point to chalk up as oh, okay well you know he's the dragon reborn okay like he's on his own level but now it's like well the Aes Sedai sometimes use the world of dreams and well Perrin has these wolf dreams but it seems like somehow all of this stuff is connected in this other realm yes yes it is uh, like like we were saying, you know, not taking a drink there, right? That would help you with right. clarity. Um, why would you even believe that to begin with? You know, right? Um, yeah, it just so it's all starting to come together, as you say. Like we're learning more about about what happens there uh, has effects that you know uh, last or, or carry over into this world. So yeah, that's pretty crazy. And, okay. and just to wrap up that little bit, um, we flash very quickly, as you say, sometimes in these chapters. You get that quick uh, point of view from another character. So we do get briefly Rand, um, who who's is, having... yeah, who is, who's hiding in the forest and this pack of dogs is hunting him and he kills one, the one power. Um, it's, it's, it's trying to get him and he basically, he feels some success because he's able to channel the one power as he needed. Sometimes it doesn't work just like the, the, you know, with the Trolloc attack, it didn't work. Now it does. And he's learn he's learning, he's working on it. Um, and he says, you know, whoever whoever's hunting him, right, they're not gonna find him to be easy meat. And so right. he is uh I think it's interesting too, like as he is everyone else is resting, Rand is pushing on. He is a man just on a mission, and he's not stopping for as much rest as, as everyone else. That's why he's able to kinda stay away and, and, and keep keep ahead of them. So Yeah. All right. Well, hey, let's uh, do you want to save chapter 10, which is kind of different for extended edition because it, we it, we get to go tie back up with what's going on with the Gwen and Ineve and Elaine and all those guys. Yep. Yep. We'll just cover that later on because it's a whole we're going to shift the setting big time there. And, and but I do. Ju- but let, just time. as just as kind of a teaser. Right. For maybe those of you who uh, the, the chapter ends with Varen saying this is where the real danger is begin yeah man so be sure yes. to check that out on <laughs> our patreon extended edition yeah as i'm glad I, I it's i'm glad that it feels like the world's getting um rounded out here right with this this big kind of parent focus um as we begin to dive into uh you know the third book here the dragon are born um only knowing that there's still you know more than 10 books to go uh, before the world expands and expands and expands, uh, so you know it feels it feels good that hey, we're, it feels like we're tying up some loose ends a little bit about things we've we've seen in book one. So just if you see something, I guess the thing I'm learning, which I'm sure you know, is you may see something in book three and you, it doesn't come back up again until book ten. So yeah, uh, <laughs> actually, you have no idea how 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 tr- how spot on you are here. 
with something that did happen in these first 10 there chapters. There is something that comes yes. up in book 10. Yes, I believe oh, okay. it will. It was the start of something that will carry on for quite some time. Perfect. Perfect. Great. Okay. All right, guys. Well, um, I think that is it for today. As don't have any um, pigeons. So, as with that, we want to thank you for answering the call. On our next episode, we will be discussing the Dragon Reborn Part Two, which I believe is chapters eleven through nineteen. Yep, absolutely. Um, if you like our podcast, don't forget to subscribe, like us, write a review, leave a comment, or send us a message at thehornavalier at gmail.com. We will see you soon. And remember that the grave is no bar to our call. 